he's going to fit in great because there's no team um, that has a locker room quite like Seattle, and that meaning the personality. Uh, a part of, of one of their mantras as a team is we're not trying to change whatever your character is, whatever your personality is. We're trying to enhance whatever we see the good parts in that. Whatever your personality is, we want you to be that person, but we just want you to be the best version of that. It's also a very young and competitive environment where they, they've been fined by the players, by, by the league. Um, they've been wrote, written up by the Players Association of having too strenuous practices, competing too much. That is one of Pete Carroll's, um, that's one of his calling cards, John Snyder. They don't waste draft picks on talented players. I mean, if you look at the draft capital they spent on some of their best players in the history of the team, look at where they came from. And for me, I, I was first-team All-America. I'm not part of this story, but I was first-team All-America in Ohio State. I was drafted in the fourth round. They spent the fifth-round pick on this kid. It wasn't like there was just, oh, some good, feel-good story. Their ability to tackle the football they have this thing called hawk tackling that they invented. Their coaching staff, Pete Carroll's embraced it. The NFL has changed their tackling with hawk tackling. Well, what is it? It removes the head from tackling, a lot like Australian rules football, so you have to get a lot closer to the player. It's a lot like Shaquem plays football because with the lack of a hand, he can't grab and clutch like other guys can. So he utilizes speed to get close. It's like you described it. It's like a, a, how almost a crocodile drowns you. Like they, they, they grab yes. you and they spin. And they coil and wrap their body around you using your, your arms and your legs to be able to get you to the ground. He also has to play in a defense that's going to be foreign to him. He's got his brother in the same defensive room explaining it to him. What about lodging as a rookie? Because it's NFL locker room, is it's, man, it's brutal. I don't care if you get drafted number one like Baker Mayfield. It's brutal because they're grown men, and they know these draft picks have come in to take their job. But because he's got a brother there to help him explain things, there's so many benefits. I can go on and on. Well, what about his family? Now they only got to go to one place. They would have to been split up. One's got to go see his brother play. One's got to be able to support him. So there are so many things that I can tell you that will lead to him being successful in Seattle that this is – this was the absolute best place for him to end up in the NFL. We shouldn't discount the off-the-field stuff. He doesn't have to look for an apartment in the beginning and live with his brother. He doesn't have to learn, all right, so when they say be there at 7 a.m., do they really mean 7? Ask his brother. When he's in the meeting room, as you were telling me yesterday, and they use totally different terminology, he doesn't have to, ah, who do I ask? What do I, ask his brother. I mean, his brother played on the same defense at UCF. And, and that bond, it's, I know a lot of people that have a twin will say that is a special bond that non-twins don't understand. People should know his big, or not his big brother. They don't have a bond like these twins. This, the, the other twin, the one that went earlier, the, a couple years years ago in the draft, had better offers to other bigger schools than UCF and turned them down because they wouldn't take his brother. He went to the best school that would take both of them. But the other point that you referenced there, which is the draft capital, which is I want football fans to know, yes, this is a feel-good story, but it's not just a feel-good story for Shaq. It's a feel-good story for the Seahawks. The Seahawks drafted Richard Sherman in the fifth round. Yeah. You think they're doing some pick for charity? This isn't – they, they got Marshawn Lynch by trading a fourth-round pick. They're not throwing these picks Russell away. Wilson. Russell Wilson in the third round. And the point you brought up yesterday that I'd never considered is if you are somewhere on the roster between guy 40 and the whole practice squad, so to guy 60, how much harder he's going to make you work? Like the examples you gave on kickoff coverage, see, and you can expand on. But yesterday when we were talking about this, he was just—he's like, "Can you imagine if you're on kickoff coverage and you're getting beat by the guy with one hand? And can you imagine if you're if you're saying, uh, coach, I might need a I might need a break. My wrist is sprained, and you see the guy out there who with one hand. Like the what it will do as far as the competition for an organization that fosters it as well as any organization in football. That competition mm -hmm. when you have this guy out there." Because what it does is it allows him to walk in on day one, focus on football. And for a lot of these other guys, they walk in on day one, they're focused on 1,400 things, as we've learned from you. And maybe number 800 would be actual football. And now he can actually come in and do the one thing. And I would imagine that once this story passes, he doesn't want to be known as the guy He's with one hand that plays for the Seattle Seahawks. He wants to fit in and just be one of the guys at some point, I what would did, imagine. What did he say about that? He said he wants to, it wants to be about overcoming obstacles. He mentioned that in his interview, Jen. That's a good point. 
He mentioned that. I don't want this to be a feel-good story. I don't want this to be the end with, ha, ah, the kid with one hand. He said, no, this is about overcoming tremendous obstacles for all people. And that's what he looks to be able to do. It's so amazing, you know, for me and the National Football League to be able to embrace someone who has not a handicap, not a disability. He just has one less hand than everyone else who's ever played this game. And I always go over the numbers. 22,000 of us ever played this game. Only 11,000 of us have played more than four years. And to have him be the first person to have this type of disability and be able to play and be drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. Because, Nick, you, Nick, you mentioned it. His brother sacrificed for him. But, man, did it come back. When John Snyder, they don't only believe in, they don't, they sure believe in the sure brothers. Good. They believe in the family. But they went out on the limb to draft this kid, to put him with his brother. Man, what a phenomenal story. And it really speaks to Pete Carroll and his legacy. He got rid of Richard Sherman. You know, we know about Bennett. Bennett, he didn't want to be there. Now he's got this young group of enthusiasm, Bill, to come back into that locker room. I'm excited to see what Seattle is going to do with him, what position he's going to play. Because I just believe from a defensive standpoint, he won't be a defensive back. He's not big. He's not. He's more of a liability in the defensive coverage than he is rushing. So he'll be in sub packages rushing the quarterback with all the speed and the rushers they have. I'm excited to see what role he carves From out. From a football himself. perspective, the hawk tackling thing can't be undersold. The way this team practices can't be undersold. From a football perspective, for Seattle, this, if there's never a story written about him, if no one ever talks about him again, it makes their team better. But just from a human perspective, he, there might not be another person with only one hand playing the National Football League for 50 years. But his impact on young people who see it, who aren't going to be pro football players, but they might be peewee football players, yep. they might be high school football yep. players, cheerleaders. might get a college scholarship, cheerleaders, basketball, whatever it is. Man, that is real. And th th I think he went to the perfect spot for him. This is We don't get a lot of these all-around amazing feel-good stories that also there's not no charity involved. It's just... For all the reasons it was the right thing, this is one of those. I'm proud, as, as a former Walter Payton, we do a lot of charity. But we don't do no charity with that draft. I was just going to say, this isn't a charity case. No, no, we don't not do no all. charity with that draft. And he doesn't those want draft it to picks be a are case. very, very valuable. That's a good point. Uh, NFL life is very chaotic. And the NFL locker room can be troubling and difficult to be able to cut your teeth and build to find your way. It can also be brutal. You know, guys in there are trying, they're fighting for jobs. And to think that everyone is inviting, then, then you, are, you are not taking the proper read of what an NFL locker room. It's survival of the fittest. And to have someone who has a story like him, that there is a familiar face. You know, he's going, man, all the way across the country. You can't go as further from South Florida, <laughs> right. central part of Florida, all the way to Seattle. You can't go any farther. So people would think, oh, man, he's excited. But having a familiar face, potentially his locker will be next to. A familiar face, a place he'll be living. Even once he makes this team, what do his parents do from a support standpoint? Do they support his brother, who's his twin, who's established himself as an NFL player? Or if, Shaquem, if he goes to another team, maybe both the parents for his first year maybe should go with him. They don't have to worry about that. And also, they have a scheme that fits him. More importantly, they have a place that they can play. We know he's going to be a great special teams player, but their ability through their coaching staff and Pete Carroll to adopt this new hawk tackling that the NFL's adopted and they make videos and they're adopting a lot of the way that Australian rule football players and it takes the head out of the tackling, how they are a team like that because he had to implement that type of tackling because he does not have a hand. When you mention the hawk tackling, it's not just taking the head out of it. It's instead of grabbing guys, wrapping guys up. So he obviously is going to be limited on grabbing guys. Yes. So it's the style in which they play defense fits his skill set. And the other, the non-football things you mention are important. Like, you don't have to worry about a place to live. Like, think back when you were 23 years old and you have to go get an apartment on your own for the first time. That is stressful. He, when, he's in the, when he's in the meeting room and he doesn't understand the terminology, he doesn't have to worry about, should I ask? I, I can just ask my brother later. All those things. And all, but I don't want people to think this was a charitable act by Seattle. Seattle no. does not get – they use these mid-round picks and draft all pros. Russell Wilson was drafted in the third round. They used a fourth-round pick to trade for Marshawn Lynch. They drafted Richard Bleep and Sherman in the fifth round. Same round. Same round. CeCe, you are first-team All-American in Ohio State. 
What round were you drafted in? I went in the fourth round. Fourth round. Like, this guy's – so, they, Seattle is not giving away these picks. They see some value in him, and some of the value they will see in him is what you saw, Chris, which is things he doesn't do himself, but what seeing him out there – working hard, playing through what he's played through for the other guys trying to make the team. Other guys on the special teams roster, what it means for them, seeing him, you're going to you're gonna have this guy outwork you. You're going to say, I got to come out of a game because I have a wrist sprain, like when you're playing next to him, the things it does for those guys. Yeah, Denny Green told us one time that, you know, all your excuses, I'm willing to listen to them. But 100% of them are, are acceptable. And when you have a player like him, no matter what you're going through, it is either second, third, or way down the list as far as overcoming some type of obstacle. He's the kind of guy that you would love to be your teammate because you got a built-in inspiration every day. And that's what he wants his story to be. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.